You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Dr. Sadia Rafi and under the supervisor professor of the Sarawza, today my topic of discussion is Palga. Learning outcomes include the introduction of Palga epidemiological trial, chain of transmission, clinical stages, level of prevention, and recent advances. Learning outcome. At the end of this presentation, as participants will be able to describe the epidemiological trial and the prevention aspect of this infection, explain the factor that contributed to spread and knowledge of recent advances. Starting with the case presentation, a patient was 27 years old. He was infected by eating contaminated food and water or by eating uncooked for food or contaminated foods. After the 24 to 48 hours, symptoms begin with the sudden onset of painless watery diarrhea that could kill become voluminous and followed by vomiting. He vomits if he eats or drinks anything. After a day, his color became pale yellow and he became weak due to dehydration by loose motions and vomiting. In the first infection, he drank some dehydration solution, but it was not very effective. He experienced a company cabramic cramps, probably from distension of loops of small bone, as a result of the large volume of intestinal secretions, and the fever was absent. Diagnosis. He went to hospital with proper checkups were performed. Doctors advised him for few tests, CBC, ASR, rapid stool test to identify cholera bacteria. Doctors confirmed cholera by identifying bacteria in a stool sample, checked their code properly, and gave him first line therapy. Cholera. According to WHO fact, uh, a key fact, cholera is an acute diarrhea disease that can kill within hours if left untreated. Provision of safe water and sanitation is critical to prevent and control the transmission of cholera and other waterborne diseases. Uh, according to current global situation, in 2021, 23 countries reported cholera outbreaks, mainly in the WHO regions of Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean. This trend continued into 2022 as 30 countries across five of the six WHO regions reported cholera cases or outbreaks. Regarding history, seven cholera pandemics have occurred in the last 20, uh, past 200 years, with the first pandemic originating in India in 1817. Outbreaks occurs across the developing world to the current day. Epidemics occurred after war, civil unrest, or natural disaster, when water and food supplies become contaminated with cholera and also due to crowded living conditions and poor sanitation. The Public Health Act of 1875 later helped to eliminate this problem as local authorities replaced their local boards which became responsible for the provision of clean water, proper drainage, and sewage systems. Introduction. Cholera is an acute diarrhea disease caused by Vibro Cholera 01, which includes classical or E1 TOR types. Commonly due to E1 TOR biotype, cases range from symptomless to severe infections. Majority of the infections are mild or asymptomatic. Typical cases are characterized by the sudden onset of profuse, effortless watery diarrhea followed by vomiting, rapid dehydration, muscular cramps, and suppression of urine. Unless there is a rapid replacement of fluids and electrolytes, the fatality may be as high as 30 to 40 percent. Epidemiological features. Cholera is both an epidemic and endemic disease. The epidemicity and endemicity of the disease will depend upon characteristics of the agent and the environment. Determinants include agent, host, and environment. Talking about the agent, this is the organism that causes cholera is labeled as Vibrio cholera 0 group 1 or Vibrio cholera 0 1. The term epidemic strain is used for these Vibrios. This is the group 0 group 1, 2 biotypes, classical or E1 TOR have been differentiated, but now mostly cholera is caused by E1 TOR biotype. So Vibrio cholera is a gram negative curved bacteria, which is facultative and aerobic. Talking about its resistance, vibrio cholera kill within 30 minutes by heating at 56 degrees centigrade or within a few seconds by boiling. Remain in ice for six to uh, four to six weeks or longer. Dry, drying and sunshine will kill them in a few hours. They are easily destroyed by cold dry disinfectants such as the sole and bleaching powder is another good disinfectant. Toxin production. Vibrios multiply in the lumen of small intestine and produces an exotoxin, which is called intertoxin. 
This toxin produces diarrhea through its effect on cyclic empty system of mucosal cells of small intestine, and it has no effects on any other tissue. Infective dose. Cholera is dose related. Infection occurs when the number of virus ingested exceeds the dose that is infected for an individual. In, uh, in host factors, age and sex, all ages and both sexes and nabic areas attack ages high school children. Gastric acidity is an effective barrier. The vibrios is destroyed in acidity or pH 5 or low. Conditions that reduce gastric acidity may increase individual susceptibility. Population mobility is one of the very important more movement of population, for example, pilgrimages, marriages, fairs, and festivals results in increased risk of exposure to infection. Economic status. Incidence is highest in low socioeconomic groups and mainly it is due to poor hygiene. Immunity. Natural infection confers quite effective immunity and is mediated by local intestinal immune system. Vaccination gives only temporary partial immunity for three to six months. Environment. Poor environmental sanitation includes contaminated water and food. Social factors responsible for the endemicity of product comprises of certain human habits favoring water and soil pollution, low standards of personal hygiene, lack of education, and poor quality of life. Chain of transmission. Reservoir. Human being is the only known reservoir of cholera infection, maybe a case or a failure. What is case? It is in apparent infection to severe. In cholera, anyone term, most infections are mild and asymptomatic. It is a mild and asymptomatic cases that play a significant role in maintaining endemic reservoir. Carriers, usually temporary, rarely chronic. They also make important contribution to the reservoir of infection. Since carriers exist few reviews, then clinical cases, carriers are best detected by bacteriological examination. Carriers in cholera are four types. A, preclinical or incubatory care carriers. Incubation period of one to five days, so these carriers are potential patients. Then the convalescent carriers. Patients who have recovered from cholera may continue to exceed reviews during this convalescence for two to three weeks. Then come the contact or healthy carriers, the result of subclinical infection, contracted through with the source of infection or infected environment. And last are the chronic carriers. Occurs infrequently, longest was found to be over 10 years. Gallbladder is infected in chronic cases. Source. The immediate source of infection are the stools and the vomit of the cases and carriers. Large number of areas. 0 to 1 to 10 is to 9 vibrios per ml of fluid are present in the stools of the cholera patient. And an average patient exceeds 10 to 20 liters of fluid. Carriers exceeds few vibrios than cases like 10 to 10 is to about 2 to 5 vibrios per gram of stool. Mode of transmission. Transmission occurs from man to man via thickly contaminated water and contaminated food and drinks. Direct contact to contaminated hand of excreta and vomit of patient, and also contaminated linens and fomites. Incubation period is from few hours up to five days, but commonly one to two days. Period of community cases, seven to ten days, then medicine carriers two to three weeks, and then case of chronic carriers ten years or more. Pathogenesis, the bacteria multiply rapidly in the small intestine and it, it releases toxins. Toxins prevents absorption of water by the intestine, leading to hypovolemic shock or and dehydration. Talking about the clinical features, it depends upon the severity of cholera, it depends on the rapidly and duration of blood loss. It includes the loss of skin and acidity, low blood pressure, increased thirst, and rapid weight loss. Talking about the stages of cholera, now one stage is stage of evacuation. The onset is abrupt with profuse, painless, watery diarrhea followed by vomiting. Patient may pass 40 stools in a day and stools have a rice water appearance. Then comes the stage of collapse. Patient soon passes to stage of collapse due to dehydration. Classical sign of sunken eyes, hollow cheeks, caphoid abdomen, abdominal temperature, absent pulse, unrecorded blood pressure, loss of skin elasticity, shallow and quick respiration, decreased urine output, death may occur due to dehydration and acidosis resulting from diarrhea. And the last is stage of recovery. If death doesn't occur, patient shows signs of clinical improvement, but if an urea persists, the patient may die of renal failure.
laboratory diagnosis. The diagnosis on clinical grounds can never be made. Laboratory methods are required to confirm, which includes the collection of stool, vomitus, water samples, food sample, transportation, direct examination, culture methods, characterization, and biochemical tests. Levels of prevention, primary prevention, which includes health promotion and specific protection. Health promotion, the most effective prophylactic measure, it should directly maintain mainly to the effectiveness and simplicity of oral rehydration therapy, the benefits of early reporting for prompt treatment, food hygiene practices, hand washing after defecation and before eating, the benefits of cooked hot food and safe water. Since cholera is many disease of poor and ignorant, these groups should be tackled first. So how to prevent infection in places where cholera is from? Bring bottled water or water that's that has been treated, food should be thoroughly cooked, individuals should peel their own fruits, prepare rice, raw food, ice cream and street foods, wash as frequently and thoroughly. Specific protection, which includes the vaccination. In 1879 to 1883, major scientific breakthroughs towards the treatment of cholera developed. The first immunization by Pasteur, the development of the first cholera vaccine. The, identify, the identification of the bacteria with the cholera was by the Filippo Pecina and Robert Koch. Cholera vaccine consists of two doses subcutaneously at an interval of four to six weeks. Boosters are recommended after six to uh, six months, not recommended for pregnant and persons with previous history of sensitivity reactions. Oral cholera vaccines are often used as an emergency medication in the event of severe outbreaks. This is complemented with improved sanitation increase in awareness about cholera prevention. Secondary prevention spread by the rapid investigation of close contacts to ensure their proper treatment. Control and treatment of cholera. For best way to control cholera is to develop and implement a national program for the control of all diarrheal diseases because of similarities in epidemiology, pathophysiology, treatment, and control of cholera and other acute diarrheal diseases. Guidelines for cholera control by WHO. Number one is the verification of the diagnosis. Confirmation of outbreak as quickly as possible. Investigation of all the cases of diarrhea for the specific diagnosis of cholera that is Vibrio cholera 01 in the stools of the patient. Then comes a notification. Cholera is notifiable disease locally, nationally, and internationally. Health workers should be trained to identify notified cases immediately to the local health authorities. Early case findings, then the establishment of treatment centers, necessity to establish easily accessible treatment facilities in the community, then the mildly dehydrated patient, which are over 90% of the cases, should be treated at home with oral dehydration fluids. And the severely dehydrated patient required IV fluids should be transferred to the nearest treatment centers or hospitals. An area where peripheral health services are poor, then mobile teams should be established at district level. Rehydration therapy, cholera is not the most effectively treated disease. Mortality rates have been brought down to less than 1% by effective rehydration therapy. The rehydration therapy may be oral or IV. Oral rehydration, because the practice of the oral rehydration therapy, or as in what one, the content of one packet is dissolved in one liter of the fluid. If then if the mixture is not available, then in one liter of fluid, five grams of salt and 20 grams of sugar are dissolved, which is called indigenous ORS or homemade ORS. Older children and adults are given water in addition to ORS according to dehydration level. It is a process how to make just to clean your hand, then uh, you mix a packet and then consume it. And how to use during the disease, you can use and while going to the hospital on the way you can uh, use ORS and also can best fit the uh, toddlers, uh, infants and small children. Intravenous rehydration it is usually required only for the initial rehydration or severely dehydrated patient who are in shock and unable to drink water. The solution recommended by WH for IV use is ringer lactate solution which is called hardness solution and diarrheal treatment solution which are called DTS. Maintenance therapy after initial fluid and electrolyte deficit has been corrected. Oral fluid should be used for maintenance therapy. The guideline for maintenance therapy are given by according to journal this one that the oral fluid trick should equal to the rate of containing stool loose, which should be measured. I diarrhea usually lasts for one to two days. Then the uh, sanitation measures, chemoprophylaxis, tetracyclines, a drug of choice, and the vaccination and health activation. These are all the guidelines by WHO. Adjuvants to therapy, antibiotics, tetracycline are the most effective and superior to all other medicines 
should be given as soon as vomiting stops, which is usually after three to four hours of oral rehydration. No other medication should be given like anti diarrhea, anti hematic, anti spasmatic, or corticosteroids. If diarrhea persists after 48 hours of treatment, resistance to antibiotics should be suspected. Recent advances. In 2021, 23 countries supported cold outbreaks, mainly in WHO regions of Africa and Eastern Mediterranean. This trend continued in 2022 as 30 countries across its five or six WHO regions reported cholera. And now, according to WHO, cholera is now endemic in many countries, mostly in Sub Saharan Africa, South Asia, and America. According to the European Center of Disease Prevention and Control, cholera cases have been continued to be reported in Africa and some areas of Asia. According to WHO, vaccination should be considered for travelers at high risk, such as emergency and relief workers who are likely to be directly exposed. Major ongoing outbreaks are being reported from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, and Nigeria. Since the last update of 16 February 2022, approximately 30,629 suspected cholera cases, including 39 deaths, have been reported worldwide. Cholera in Pakistan in 2022, Sindh province is facing a significant increase in cholera cases, with 234 laboratory confirmed cases reported between 15 Jan to 27 May. Balochistan and Punjab provinces also reported 31 and 25. 25 confirmed cases of cholera, respectively. This is a global task force on cholera control. The objective of this guidance document is to support the public health profession in implementing effective surveillance of cholera in at risk, endemic, and epidemic areas. And this document has been developed by the Surveillance Working Group of Global Task Force of Cholera Control at the World Health Organization based on existing documents, guidelines, and tools. It includes for uh, cholera, key factors for effective surveillance include the existence of a stand, uh, clear reporting procedures, routine feedback of surveillance data, standard case definition, analysis plan, appropriate coordination at all levels of public health sectors like community, health, facility, district, national, international level, the simple data collection tools, rapid diagnosis of suspected cases, and laboratory information. And in cholera, global roadmap to 2033. Is a new global strategy for cholera control at the country level developed by health department, including WHO. The goal is to reduce cholera deaths by 90% as that limited disease transmission in as many as 20 countries by 2030. The roadmap proposes that more effective control will be achieved through targeted and sustained preventive interventions in cholera hotspots, including the provision of clean water, adequate sanitation and hygiene facilities, and access to oral cholera vaccine. The road mass was endorsed this year at the World Health Assembly as a part of global resolution of address cholera. World Health Organization about the cholera case 2020. To treat 100 cases at different levels of care or perform laboratory analysis of 100 samples. The revised cholera case 2020 are designed to help prepare for the potential cholera outbreak and support the first month of the initial response for 100 cases. The overall package consists of six different kits, each divided in seven modules, like central reference kits, pathway kits, community kits, then hardware kit, investigation kit, and laboratory kit. These are for the first 100 patients. You can see treatment kit. These are three kinds of treatment kit that each has supplies 100 people. It includes the oral hydration salt, cups, IV fluids, giving sets, drugs, cholera beds, chlorine tests, medical equipment, jerry cans, plastic buckets, sampling materials, soap, examination gloves, and uh, stationary document. WHO collect kits are tailor made to prepare for outbreak and to meet the needs of initial response. Then they have investigation kit to slice and collect the process of 107 and hardware kits. So these are like all the gadgets are included in it. Then uh, cholera prevention and control in Asian countries. So their strategic initiative for uh, social mobilization and health promotion by empower population, then the collaboration, strengthening collaboration between all partners of stakeholders and the initiative of the WASH implementation and speed of WASH implementation. Water sanitation and hygiene. So we have to stop cholera by drinking and using safe water, wash your hands, clean up safely, use toilets and cook food well and wash your foods by CDC. Now it's time for multiple choice questions. Question number one, a water stool sample was collected from the five years old boy who suffering from diarrhea for two years after the incubation in high pH media containing LSA, smooth and out colonies appear. Gram negative metal coma shape bacteria was observed after the microscopic examination. Name the possible bacteria. Aromonas, hydrophilia, E. coli, halicobacter pylori, bibliocolary, or salmonella.
the correct option is D, Vibrio cholerae. Cholerae is predominantly mainly in developing countries where risk is a lack of clean drinking water supply. Name the type of diarrhea infection associated with Vibrio cholerae. Acute watery bloody diarrhea, acute watery rice diarrhea, mild watery diarrhea, acute watery diarrhea with no blood, mild bloody diarrhea. Option D is correct, acute watery rice diarrhea. The organism that causes cholera is labeled as Vibrio cholera 0 pro 1 or Vibrio cholera 1. The term epidemic strain is used for these Vibrio. Which of the following biotype of Vibrio cholera is prevalent in developing countries? E1 trot, class A, biotype 139, biotype 0139, and Vibrio cholera harvivai. Option A is correct, E1 trot. Patient X was the came to the emergency department with presenting a pain of severe diarrhea and abnormal pain after investigation he was diagnosed with cholera. Cholera is an acute diarrheal illness caused by infection of the intestine. All of the following are the common cholera symptoms except diarrhea, dehydration, and vomiting, high grade fever, and rapid weight loss. The correct option is high grade fever. Cholera is not the most effective treatment, please. Mortality rates have been brought down to less than 1% by effective therapy, which of the following is most commonly used, easy and effective method for the treatment of cholera symptoms in developing countries. Continuous oral dehydration with electrolyte. Intake of glucose or medication of the onset of foreign infection, vaccination method, intravenous plates, and or antibiotics. The correct option is continuous oral dehydration with electrolytes. A. Man to man transmission of cholera infection is very easy. People can get sick when they swallow food or water contaminated with cholera bacteria. Most powerful mode of transmission of cholera is flies, food, finger pieces, or fomites. The correct option is D. Pieces. Antibiotics and cholera should be given as soon as vomiting stops, which is usually after three to four hours of oral dehydration. No other medication should be given like antidiarrhea, antiemetic, antispasmatic, or corticosteroid. WHO recommendations for use of antibiotics against cholera is ampicillin, chlorophenicol, betacyclines, salosporins, or penicillin. The correct option is C. B. C. Tetracycline. Cholera vaccine is very effective in preventing cholera, but it should not be given to pregnant women and persons with previous history of sensitivity. Which of the following statements is true regarding cholera vaccine? It is highly effective vaccine given in a dosage of 0 0.05 CP. It contains 500 millions of Vibrio cholerae given in two doses, four to six weeks apart, or contains an ABBA strain only. D? Yes, D is the correct option given in two doses, four to six weeks apart. In case of cholera, healthy individuals are given antibiotics with the aim of protecting them against the disease. Chemoprophylaxis with tractor has been indicated in cholera cases for pregnant females, children below 5 years of age, elderly above 65 years of age, household contacts, doctors, and paramedical staff. A. Nine, uh, no, the correct option is D, household contacts. In fact, it's true that the is a main source of contamination and spread of infection. With effective antibiotic treatments, 